T.G. Brooks Company. Uh, it's a little bit warmer on the outside today than we've had in a few days, but we're going to be talking about a lot of useful information that uh, maybe you can uh, apply and make things a little bit easier and better for you. Our special guest today, all the way from the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, where he serves as the director for person in Granville Counties, if you please would make welcome Mr. Paul Westfall. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Paul. How hey, are you? Doing well. You made it sound like I had to come a long way. So, <laughs> well, but no, we're right down the road. Well, but now, uh, <clears throat> you, you are a busy individual, and uh, you uh, got your day started real early this morning. A little earlier, yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, it was an event that started out at 8 o'clock this morning mm -hmm. down at the um, Granville County Expo and Convention Center that's located on Highway 15 South in Oxford. And uh, Paul, if you would, tell us a little bit about what all was taking place sure. today. Uh, that, this is our initial meeting that we had this morning to let folks know about something that we're trying to work with the Department of Ag and Consumer Science Services and with the Cartar Regional Council of Governments to work on developing a telephone app. You know, I know we, we say good things about bad things about smartphones and uh, tablets and all that kind of stuff, but uh, more and more people use these things, you know, as a part of, you know, you know they can't do without them. Right, absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. So what the idea is that uh, we're working on developing this app to go onto a, you know, your, your phone called Visit NC Farms. And what this will do, if a grower or somebody with an agritourism interest or a farmer that wants to sell product off his farm uh, to the public, uh, if there's an event or a festival or something that's agriculturally related, you know, we can put that on this app. <coughs> Excuse me, man, talked too much already this morning. But uh, what this will do is gives the public a way that they can pull out their phone, call up this app, and find a place that's selling tomatoes or a farmer's market that's open that particular day or something like that. Well, you know, Paul, I think that is a wonderful idea. We're going to get Kilby uh, to zoom in on what the app is intended to look like. But uh, a lot of people out there uh, rely on their smartphones and smart devices uh, for not only information, but to keep up their scheduling right. and things like that. And it's really nice to have it at your fingertips to where you can uh, look up maybe what's going on. And it's a very useful tool to have. And uh, I'll be one of the first to admit, I put off putting, I put off getting a smartphone <laughs> you know, as long as, as I could. And uh, when I did get a smartphone, uh, I became very frustrated <laughs> because of not knowing how to operate it. But I'm getting a little <clears throat> bit more used to it. And as time goes on, uh, I really like it. And, and I would hate to take a step backwards, but- well, uh, yeah. And sometimes we say, man, I wish I could go back to that flip phone, which you had not too, too long ago. <laughs> That's right. And you can actually still get those things. But uh, uh, this, this, this particular app that we're talking about is called Visit NC Farms. It's a mobile app. It goes on the phone. And it's pretty cool because it will take your location. If you go on this app, and you, it will show you the farms that are closest to you that are, that are lit, registered on this app. You know, say, uh, right now, Orange County is the only county listed. We want to change that. Right. So we're working together with Extension in uh, Granville, Person, Franklin, Warren, and Vance, along with the Cartar Council of, you know, Regional Council of Governments, because that's the area they cover, uh, to put up a regional uh, focus on this app for, for our farmers. And we're doing that for, for two reasons. One is that the Cartar has agreed to do, like, the, the, the work behind-the-scenes work to, to get all this information registered into the app 
Uh, plus, it helps spread out the cost. This is not a free thing for us to do. Right. Uh, we're, we do have each county has put up a pot of money to to meet the the requirement to buy into it, so to speak. And then there's a uh, a maintenance fee that we have to pay every month. But uh, we've got enough money from the five counties, and then we use that money to leverage a grant from the Department of Agriculture to further develop this. So we can offer this free to, to farmers, to farmers markets, to venues, uh, anything agriculturally related, related where they want the general public to come to their place or buy their product or anything like that. Or even if, uh, say, uh, a product is made and marketed through a store, you know, we can get that on the app too. So where, where do you find our pride pimental cheese? Maybe that's something that could go on this app. I hadn't thought about right. that well, until just now. But that, that's a wonderful. So, hey, let's get them on there. Well, that, that's right. That's a wonderful <clears throat> idea, Paul. Now, Paul, does the, does the app already exist? And it's just going to be made to where it's, it's going to be covering and uh, in, 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 having lots more information that's on where it. we're at we're trying to get more information as i said before right now it's only active or live in orange county which okay. is right next to us but that doesn't put person county farmers on this in the limelight here right. and we want to to make sure that our person county you know farmers and agritourism uh interests and events and all have this as one more tool in their marketing toolbox in order to help people to find them uh, yeah, the challenge is going to be getting people to download this app onto their phone, but it, you, it's free to download. All you have to do is go to either the App Store or to Google Play, and if you've got a phone, you've done that a time or two. But, uh, again, I know we've got the poster here that Kilby's zooming in on, and we just had this meeting this morning as our initial kickoff meeting, but that's what the app will look like you know, on your phone. When you, you download it and then tap on it, that's the screen that's going to come up. And... Uh, and then that orange banner where it says mobile app, if you can read it on the screen there. I know the radio folks can't, but just trust me, it says mobile app. That's right. Uh, that will say person county, if you're in person county. Uh, if, the, if the visitor is in Granville County, it'll say Granville County and so on, or Orange County. That's but, a uh, wonderful idea. But we're, the, we're the, the second entity, I guess, entity or group that's going to get... Uh, our farms onto this app and make it available to our growers and of course to anybody that would like to come to Person County and and and, and enjoy uh, what goes on in our agricultural world. Uh, for instance, uh, one of our speakers this morning was Jack Pleasant. Uh, Jack has a business out here just uh, outside of Roxboro. Uh, he, he calls it Sunset Ridge Buffalo Farm and he said he gets uh, people every day just driving up the road hoping to see a buffalo, buffalo. Uh, but he's got a business uh, he, he does tours he likes to do group tours not individual tours he made that very clear but uh, he said he said he, he pointed out this is a, another way that I can get the name of my farm and what I'm doing out to people to get them to come and buy some 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 of his bison meat or he offers a wedding venue, he open outdoor weddings. He's it's got a, a beautiful gazebo. Place out there. Beautiful, and uh, for an extra fee, he can actually have buffalo in the background. Uh, he said he has to do that extra because uh, of the way his pastures are set up for grazing his buffalo. And uh, uh, there, I guess he said something about herding buffalo is kind of like trying to herd cats. They'll go where they want to go, when they want to go, well, and you just have to convince them that that's where they want to go. Yeah. Uh, horses are like that, too, at times, but, I think. But they but, can uh, be. They certainly can. Um, you, you certainly have. It helps if you have a way to entice them. Absolutely. But sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> sometimes they don't, don't want the enticement. They just want to be contrary. But That's uh, right. And speaking of uh, Mr. Jack Pleasant, mm -hmm. um, I guess it was a week ago this past Thursday, uh, they done a little feature on the Sunset Ridge Buffalo Farm mm -hmm. on PBS. On the Weekend and, Now uh, show, yeah. And mm -hmm. So I thought that was uh, pretty neat. But um uh, and, he and, you he's know, had a lot of phone calls after that, too. So. I'm sure he has. And, you know, Paul, in, in a sense, everybody is in this business together, so to speak. Right. And uh, when you're involved in agriculture and agritourism, 
the two things work hand in hand, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's a really good idea because it's a lot of people that like to uh, just sometimes, hey, I found out about this place. Let's right. just go ride and see it. See sure. what it is. We're mm -hmm. not doing anything else. And uh, what so, we want to do with this app is get those folks uh, that aren't from Person County, or even within Person County, but especially those folks in, in the RTP area, you know, Raleigh, Durham, uh, Research Triangle, uh, maybe maybe as far away as Greensboro, Charlotte, who knows? They will travel to come to your farm if that's what they want to see or what's the product that they want to buy. And the and, nice thing about tourism is now they may demo this app and they may see something mm -hmm. on there about Sunset Ridge Buffalo Farm and they may travel in for a tour there or something right. and turn around and leave and go back home. But I would say 99 times out of 100, when someone comes into town for a visit, they're going to stop at multiple locations. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. hopefully spend money than just going to that one venue and turning right. around and leaving. And a lot so, of time, a lot of times they want to say, "Okay, what else is here to that's see?" That's right. That's uh, right. And they want to want to make multiple visits of it. That's that's one reason wine trails are so successful up in uh, you know New York wine country. Yes. And uh, you know wine trails do well. We've got a quilt trail here in Person County. Uh, it's very successful, doing well. People like to go and see handmade quilts. Well. Uh, you're familiar with that. I, right? I, I absolutely <clears throat> am, and I happened to see a, a couple of those quilts just a few days ago. And, and mm -hmm. speaking of, uh, you know, apps and smartphones, um, Kilby helped me download the app to the radio station to my phone okay. to where you can log on and, and listen to the station mm -hmm. on your smart device. You can also watch past editions of the Gardener's Corner sure program. Can. That's right. And, and with that being said, for those of you that are listening on the radio, uh, hopefully by this afternoon, about four o'clock, this edition of the Gardener's Corner program will be loaded to the website, radioroxburg.com, and you can go and uh, get a little preview of what this uh, Visit NC Farms app looks like. And you may want to go ahead and download it to your phone and and hopefully mm -hmm. it will grow and get better. But with the about the uh, Person County Quilt Trail, an, a, another app that I just recently downloaded was Explore Roxborough. There you go. And it has a lot of information about it. And just as soon as I can, I'm going to download this Visit NC Farms, okay, and I good. think that will be a, a, a wonderful. Uh, right. app, and, I sure do. And that's one thing I want to want to point out too is that uh, Tourism Development Authority, you know, Margaret McMahon and her her folks there are you know are, have a vested interest in this thing now. They're very supportive. Uh, economic development is very supportive of this because they want to see the agricultural economy grow along with the rest of our economy because that's a significant portion of Person County's uh, uh, what they call that domestic. Uh, uh, Value or whatever, or, uh, well, you know, prod, domestic product. I guess they call it now instead of a gross gross product, but domestic product that's grown within Person County. Agriculture is a huge thing, and this is a growing segment of that. Uh, I'm not sure if Margaret McMahon is listening today or not. If she is, wonderful. If she's not, mm -hmm. uh, I will say this, I, and I want to give that lady a lot of praise. She works hard. And she keeps up with things that are going on in this mm -hmm. area. And she does everything that she can to help promote it. And we've got several business people throughout the county that's really big on promoting sure. the area. Mm -hmm. One being Larry Cole. But Margaret is the executive director of the Person County Tourism Development Authority. And... Uh, uh, I tip my hat to her, and I, and I tell her many, many times that I think she does a wonderful job. And the biggest majority of funds that the tourism department uh, gets to use is money from motel and hotel mm -hmm. tax. That's so, right. you know, a lot of people may think that they are paying tax money 
into the tourism department, but not really. So no, it's kind and, of kind of roundabout there. And, and, and it's something that helps us all. It does, and, and the more people we can get to come to Person County and stay in Person County, you know, the better off the whole county is for that. You know, it's all part of tourism. It's part of our economy too. And this is a place where agriculture and tourism kind of go together. I agree. And, and the two are great, uh, great separately. We want them to be great together. Uh, and one way, means of doing that is through, through this new app that we're working on. And, you know, I, I'd let you know the timeline so people were interested. Uh, we're, we're taking applications now. Uh, it doesn't cost anything at this point. Uh, we got enough money to run it for about a year and a half, you know, at no charge. And we have to revisit either find some more money or revisit how it's funded. But uh, we want to get it get it out. We want people to use it, and and then we'll figure out what the value is from there and how well it's working. But uh, people this morning at this breakfast meeting were very excited about it. Uh, the the farmers and, and growers and festival uh, uh, folks that run some different. The Lord Granville Al Gulvin was there. Right. He and his wife. Uh, they're they're very very interested in this and they see how it can help them. The Lord Granville uh, Agricultural Heritage Show, which I believe is coming up next. Yeah, month. yeah, it'll be uh, uh, about the first weekend in October. Yeah, sure it's we. coming up soon. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about yes. that between now and then. But. Uh, uh, it was very very excited about it uh, we got some applications in already if uh, some folks listening would like an application contact uh, my office there at person county cooperative extension uh, we'll be happy to, to either send it to you or send you to a website where you can fill it out yourself or just stop by and fill it out in the office there and we'll get this over uh, they'll get all the information loaded into the app and we want to have enough to, enough on the app to have this thing go live uh, in October so well, now, that's, that's our target date now. Paul, the application that you're talking about, people filling out, mm -hmm. if it's someone that is uh, doing something agricultural related mm -hmm. or on the farm, they can fill it out to have their information Absolutely. available on this app. Absolutely, correct? yes. We need, need their, of course, their name, their, their address. So we, it, there's a map on there that shows where the farm is, and it'll actually take, say, somebody in Raleigh wants to come to Person County and find. Uh, uh, while Sunset Ridge, uh, there's a mapping feature to the app that will, t you know, help them get there. It help them find the place. Uh, if there's a particular product they want to want to want to find for sale, say they're on the farm or the farmers market, you know, they can find it on the app. It it'll map it. Wow. Before they can get there. There's a lot. Technology lot to this thing. is is really coming 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 a long way. It it sure is. But we're yeah. There's a lot to this. I don't know if we can explain it all adequately on the air. I just want to say this is something that, that, that we in Cooperative Extension are excited about. The the Cartar Council of Government is excited about it, and they bought into it and are putting a lot of support into this. Of course, the uh, Department of Agriculture and uh, Consumer Services is, is also very excited. Ms. Annie Baggett is a re marketing specialist. She's uh, kind of the driving force behind this, developing this, and she's going all across the state. You know doing a lot of things as far as a agriculture, agricultural tourism, agricultural marketing, uh, and trying to get people, uh, people that want to buy a product connected with people that have that product to sell. So that's basically kind of what her job is in a nutshell. Now, if we've kind of sparred some interest and you would say, hey, I wish I could have went to that meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, if you was unable to attend today, the next meeting will be on Tuesday, August the 7th. Right. Uh, the meeting is going to be at Franklin County Extension Center, 103 South Bickett Boulevard in yep. Lewisburg. And this will be an evening meeting at 6 30 p.m mm -hmm. and uh, they ask that if you would rsvp uh they will be serving dinner and whenever it's a meal involved it is really helpful for you to rsvp so they know how many people we, people we have to know how many plates to order because how many how many plates we tell the caterer to bring that's how many for sure we have to pay for so that's we don't right. want that's we right. wanted to know it as close a number as we can, and you know it's going to be very similar to the meeting we had this morning over in Franklin County, except it's going to be uh, you'll get supper there yeah. instead of getting breakfast, and then uh, uh, they have Mr. Russell Volmer from Volmer Farms over in Franklin County will be be talking about his operation and how he thinks this app can help, and then uh, Mr. Bob Sykes at Turtle Mist Farm uh, there. It's also kind of an edge right 
not far from the Granville County line, but it's uh, still in Franklin County. They're close to Franklin and uh, in Youngsville. But uh, they've got some unique operations. They do some really neat things. They're both members of the Agritourism uh, Council or whatever they call that. They'll talk more about that at this meeting too. But uh, that again, that's August 7th. That's a Tuesday evening. So if you weren't able to go to this meeting and you, if you'd like to have a night out with a free meal, that's a good place to go. Uh, a little drive over to Lewisburg. Oh, yes, yeah, a nice drive over there. It certainly is. Uh, to RSVP, you can call 919. Four nine six three three four four. That's nine one nine four nine six three three four four. And if you was unable to jot that number down, you can either call the person or Granville County offices and tell them you would like to attend that meeting in Lewisburg on Tuesday, August seventh. And we have registration links up on our websites so, too. So. And, and what is your website address again, Paul? Oh. <laughs> person.ncsu.edu so be sure to check that out we're going to get a word on now for South Boston Memorials uh, we are glad to have them as a sponsor they are actually over in the South Boston Virginia area uh, actually on Seymour Drive here's more information South Boston Memorials located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia, has been in business since 1958. The Myers family of South Boston Memorials believe that every life has a story. For four generations, their life work has been to present and preserve that story for our prosperity to hear. Allow South Boston Memorials to tell yours. South Boston Memorials has granite memorials, markers, and mausoleums over 300 in stock. In-house laser etching is available at South Boston Memorials, and they can also make pet markers. For memorial benches, vases, and monuments, call on South Boston Memorials at 434-572-3859 or visit their website, SoboMemorials.com. That's 434-572-3859. South Boston Memorials is located 1439 Seymour Drive in South Boston, Virginia. Like us on Facebook or visit the website, SoboMemorials.com. All righty, here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program. Uh, we have kind of... Uh, shifted gears and uh, brought in a young lady uh, that's going to talk with us in just a few minutes and her name is Jada Hannah she is the intern for Person County 4-H and uh, Jada you were just telling me kind of uh, sad news as today mm -hmm. is your last day because you're going to be preparing to get ready to head back to college. Yes, I am. It's a little bittersweet, but... Well, uh, before we talk about anything, mm -hmm. i got to ask this. Have you enjoyed your time and experience as being the intern here in Person County? I have. I've really loved it, loved working with the kids and Michelle and everybody in the extension office and got to meet a lot of friendly mm -hmm. people i'm sure yes. now you were uh doing a lot with 4-h on your spring mm -hmm. summer break what are some of the things that that you uh helped out with and, and some of the uh things that you uh enjoyed most of all um well we went to 4-h camp that was pretty fun the kids had a lot of fun I would go next year, but I'm not an intern. <laughs> I won't be an intern next summer. But I enjoy doing that with the kids and having that experience to go. Now, you are a student at NC State University. I am. And uh, so when have you got to report back to class? The 22nd of August. That'll be here before <laughs> you know it. It sure will. <laughs> anyway, those of you that are seeing Jada on TV uh, when you look at her you say it's no way that she can be in college she looks to be maybe 14 or 15 she's a, a very young 
looking lady, <laughs> but uh, she she's really excited. And I, w you was here what maybe four, we five, were, six weeks ago. Yes, we were here on Michelle's birthday. Wow, time flies. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Well, look. So uh, as when you head back to uh, uh, NC State University. Uh, some of the experiences that you had being the intern, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll enjoy sharing with a lot of your friends and classmates. And now you're hoping eventually to uh, have some job related in some mm -hmm. shape, form, or fashion with, with agriculture and 4-H, correct? Yes. Well, what, if you could choose today what mm. you think that you would like to do, <laughs> what would That's that choice hard. be? Mm. That's very hard. <laughs> don't so, look at me. So you, you don't know what, yeah. what, what you would be. So you're, you're, It's you're, hard to decide. You're still ready to experience a mm -hmm. few more things. But now, so you, you just said you will not be able to be an intern next year. Now, is the reason for that you only have one year that you can intern? Well, they get different interns as in the summer. I mean, I can always go and visit and volunteer. Well, I hope that you will. I sure do. Uh, we were talking earlier with uh, Paul Westfall about the uh, new app that is being developed, and it's uh, Visit NC Farms. And right now the app only covers Orange County, but they are hoping to have it launched, a person county section of it, by October. And again, if you would be interested in filling out an application, you can contact uh, the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service Office of Person County, 336-599-1195, and they could s email you the application or give you the website. And uh, if you're someone that is maybe uh, doing some type of agritourism, and it's a lot of agritourism here in Person County and the surrounding area. I'm aware of some of it. There's a lot that I'm not aware of, and I think this will be a wonderful opportunity, and it's a free opportunity to help grow your business. And uh, again, 336-599-1195 for more information. Jada, before I let you go, um, as far as working with uh, Michelle Van Ness, I'm sure that uh, she kept you on the go quite a lot, didn't she? She did. And now, uh, I, I know when we had talked with Michelle before, uh, she was talking about uh, several of the 4-H uh, summer classes and camps that she was really excited about. And uh, we'll talk with her in just a few minutes about it. <laughs> but for anyone that has a child between the ages of 5 and 18, uh, would you strongly encourage them to get that child involved in 4-H? I would. It's a great opportunity for kids to do. And uh, I say this every time we talk about 4-H, and <laughs> I must admit I thought that 4-H only stood for cooking and cows. But... <laughs> It's so much more than that, and 4-H has something available for any and every youth. So if you'd like to get more information on Person County 4-H, uh, log on to uh, Facebook. They have a uh, page there, and it's Person County 4-H, mm -hmm. or you can contact Michelle Van S at 336-599-1195. I would tell you to uh, contact Jada, but... Today's her last day, so uh, anyway, thank you for coming out, spending a little bit thank of time you. with us, and I uh, want to wish you the very best, and uh, maybe next uh, spring and summer, if you come by for a visit, be sure to stop by and uh, see us here at the radio station and let us know how your education, <laughs> and uh, maybe you'll know next year uh, at this time what, what profession that you would really like yes. to have. All right, we're going to get a word on for T.G. Brooks Company in business since 1936. Here in July, two things are important to a lot of us here in Person County. Number one is getting those delicious vegetables and pickles put up for the winter, whether you grew them or bought them at one of the two farmer's markets. 
T.G. Brooks Company has all your canning jars in half pints, pints, quarts, half gallons, and they have pressure cookers, bath canners, strainers, funnels, in fact, all of your canning supplies. They have stone jars for pickling, too. Number two, the second thing is keeping everything green. And T.G. Brooks Company can handle all kinds of watering needs. First of all, they have sprinklers, water hose, sprayers, and water hose parts. They have irrigating equipment, too. T.G. Brooks Company also has your piping for irrigating, and they have gas-powered pumps. A reminder, T.G. Brooks Company has Bartlett animal feeds, and they have dog fences and famous pride dog food by the bag. Also, it's time to beautify your property while you're outdoors. They offer so many kinds of mulch in bulk form or bagged, and you can get it by the large scoop, too. They have delivery service available also. Bring your truck, trailer, and they'll load it up for you. When it comes to yard tools to do the work, they have your hose and diggers and choppers and everything you need to beautify. Be sure to enjoy the day with your family by ending a day with delicious hand-cut ribeye steaks sold and cut to your width and cook it up on the grill. And then ice cream made with a White Mountain ice cream freezer for these hot days available at T.G. Brooks Company. They've served the farmer, homeowner, and landscaper in the area since 1936. All righty, here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program. Just a few minutes ago, we spoke with uh, Jada Hanna, and she has been the intern this uh, spring and summer for Person County 4-H. She is a student at North Carolina State University, and today is her last day. Here with us right now uh, is uh, Paul Westfall. He's back, and oh, also yeah. Miss Michelle Van Ness, who is the 4-H agent for Person County. And Michelle, uh, I know you've had a really busy spring and summer. Uh, now, you all just established a 4-H shooting club, correct? Uh, yes, sir, we did. And I understand you had a really large amount of interest in this club. I did. I have. I had 60 people express interest. Now, I don't have 60 people in the club because... It, it happens, but I have about 10 members that came to the last meeting. Now, if someone is interested in that, would it still be an opportunity for them to become a part of it? Absolutely. As long as they're nine years old, as of January 1st, they can contact me and I can get them in touch with the leaders and they can start the club whenever they want. Now, for, for the shooting club, they have to be at least nine years old as of January 1st. But for pretty much getting a child involved in 4-H, as long as they're five years old, they, they could start something then, correct? Yes, sir. Now, Michelle, of the 4-H uh, uh, summer classes and camps, uh, I know it was several different ones that we talked about that you really showed a lot of excitement and enthusiasm about. Uh, of, of the ones that you have uh, taken part in, uh, I know our very own Beth Davis's son, Troy, uh, made the, uh, what do they call it, the zoo snooze mm -hmm. trip. Did y'all have a good time? Oh, we had a blast. We really? had a blast. At so you think snooze. that was uh, one, of, one of the top events uh, of, of the summertime? That's, that was a top top five for really? sure. We're not done yet. I still have three more events, but or four more, but Zeus News was top five. Now, what what other ones have, do you think that the participants have really had a large time doing? Uh, I actually had kids really enjoy their program that they did that they did with Johnny. We did one called Gardening 101. I right. had one kid yelling, telling me it was the best time of his life. <laughs> So I, cool. the kids really, I think they really enjoyed their program with Johnny because they got to go outside and they got to catch bugs and they planted gardens and uh, they got to plant vegetables and flowers and uh, I had a lot of kids were very excited about that one, which surprised me a little bit, but they loved it. Well, you know, Paul and I started the show out talking about, you know, smart device apps and things like that and uh, I, I think it's a lot of younger people that spend way too much time, whether it's on uh, the internet playing a game or 
or on a, some other type of smart device. The nice thing about 4-H, it gives the opportunity for the child to experience something that maybe they have never experienced mm -hmm. before. And 4-H helps teach character, responsibility, also public speaking, and 4-H and introduces that child to other children that has similar lights. And you know, if, if anything, we all need to be able to walk up to someone and extend a hand and say, hello, my name is such and such, it's nice to meet you because that's something that you need throughout life. Wouldn't that's you agree, right. Paul? Absolutely. You need to be able to, to express yourself to other people. And then, of course, in, in, in your position behind the microphone here at the radio station, and you know, Michelle and I are up in front of you know, different groups at different times, you, know, you need to be able to, to stand up there and be able to express what you want to tell folks. And you know, for instance, this morning at our meeting, I had to introduce everybody, every, get their the whole show started and then of course it went really smoothly because all the people there were very good and very professional about how they presented uh, but uh, just getting up in front of a group is pretty intimidating at times. It, it can be and uh, it, you, you never know when you may have to uh, 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 grab the microphone and keep the folks entertained or informed you know until you know the next person comes around that's you know the featured speaker but again if you are interested in getting that child of yours involved in 4-H and from the way that uh, Michelle has talked about uh, how much fun that the kids had with the you know classes and all that they have already had and she said it's four more going on and Jayla talked about how fun it was for her you know, to interact with the kids, having fun and doing different things. It may be something that you want to start to think about, maybe getting your child involved in 4-H, and if not, maybe next spring and summer, maybe get them signed up for some of the different classes. And they had a wide variety of them. And you know, the thing about a child, I think everybody has their own expectations of what they would like to see that child and that family to grow up and become. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it doesn't work out that way. But, you know, one good thing about 4-H, it will introduce them to some different things, and that will help them, you know, grow and develop and make life choices. And uh, so, Michelle, appreciate you and all the other supporters of 4-H, which 4-H stands for head hands, heart, and health. And so 336-599-1195, uh, speak with the Michelle Van S about getting that youth of yours involved in 4-H. We're going to take a break, and we'll uh, get a word on for Our Pride Foods, makers of Our Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Our Pride Foods, makers of Our Pride Premium Pimento cheese spread and dip is made in Roxborough. Pick up some the next time you're shopping at Hurdle Mills Market and Butcher Shop, North Main IGA, Supply Line Discounts in South Boston, Virginia, Food Lion, or Kenyon's Meat Market in Nevin. You can enjoy our pride premium pimento cheese spread and dip at Rock City Grill, Coles Pharmacy, Triss's Espresso, and Clarksville Station. Owl Pride Foods, makers of Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip, remind you that goodness grows in North Carolina. Try the jalapeno added for extra flavor. That's Owl Pride Premium Pimento Cheese Spread and Dip. Here we are back on the Gardener's Corner program. Uh, Mr. Paul Westfall is here with us. Paul, I've got a lot of information right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll hand you this information right there. Very good. And I'm going to make mention of this. Coming up on August the 28th, it's going to be Aging with Gusto. And it's going to be taking place at the Person County Office Building. 
304 South Morgan Street. For more information, you can call 336-599-1195. And that is the number two, the uh, Extension Service Office here in Person County. But uh, it's going to be pretty much a day of activities and events. Uh, they'll start at 830 and uh, it will go on until about 2 o'clock that day. Uh, they'll have lunch and a guest speaker. 336-599-1195. It's a $12 registration fee. So go ahead and get signed up for that. And when calling 336-599-1195, uh, you can speak with uh, Jennifer Grable. She is the... Uh, family consumer science agent for the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service for person in Granville Counties and uh, she'll get you signed up or you can also call Maynell Harper or Lisa Manez at the Person County Senior Center 336-599-7484 for more information. Okay. Uh, now, Paul, I understand that uh, it's going to be a corn plot tour coming up in the near future. Yes. Uh, Gary Cross, our crops agent, uh, puts out some demonstration and research plots every year. And this year he's put out uh, some plots down at the Homestead Research Farm. They're just south of Butner. Uh, it's going to be that he wants to have a tour of his plots to show people, you know, what have, what what's happened on these things. Uh, this will be for farmers that like to grow corn uh, commercially, but this tour will be Tuesday, August 21st uh, next month, about three weeks, uh, starting nine in the morning. Should be over with by noon. Uh, it's, this will be to locations. There's a quarter mile southwest of Lake Holt uh, or or Butner. Uh, it's off old 75, you know, the old uh, old Durham Road, I guess they call it in some direction, the Ox <laughs> Oxford Road old from Oxford, the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this plot has got forage corn uh, plants or some hybrids uh, for forages as well as, you know, our, our standard varieties that we ha harvest for grain. Uh, and then uh, they also, one of the things he was looking at in these plots was insect resistance because corn earworm and uh, it, it's a huge problem in trying to grow corn to get the end of the, the ears and they just start eating and eating and, and soon your ears pretty well ruined uh, and people don't, really don't like to uh, pick an ear of corn and then start shucking it and find some worms in it you know it's unpleasant it's, we don't it like is that. bad it is so bad. they're going to have some seed representatives there uh, Gary's uh, made arrangements to have the different seed, some seed company folks there they're going to talk about forage uh, and and, and corn hybrids for, for regular types too, forage corns, and that's the ones you cut for silage. Uh, and they're gen, the genetics are on the forage varieties are to produce more silage type corn. And then uh, the, the grain varieties are also represented there. So there'll be some presentations on that. Uh, Gary's done a em corn emergent study for the last three years, and he's got some emergence plots out there. And that's uh, basically uh, reaffirming to us that uh, if you can get your corn to germinate and uh, the seedlings out uniformly on the same day, as close to the same day as possible, uh, the, the corn that comes, the higher percentage of corn that uh, emerges on that first day after seeding or that it does emerge, of course it takes a few days to get there, but the, the first day one emergence, the more seedlings you can get on day one, the better your corn crop is going to be. That's, and, all, that's, and, that's, that's all that comes down to, and that's all it needs to come down to because that's money in the farmer's pocket right there. And we, we can show that through Gary studies and demonstrations. And I've been seeing uh, articles in the farm press uh, from across the country that says the same thing. I said, Gary, <laughs> you're ahead of your time. These people, other people are just now writing about it, and you've been working on this for the last three years. And, and, and you know, the times that I have spoken with Gary about it, 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 it's amazing to me. And he says from first day emergence to three day emergence is a, a tremendous it amount is. of difference. And he says if you could get all of those seed to emerge on the first day, you're probably looking at a 40 to 50 bushel more per acre right. 
harvest. And they, that, that's unbelievable. He's shown it every year. That's the way, same way it happens every time. The, and it boils down to the higher percentage you can get to come out on that first day of emergence, the better off you're going to be. Uh, so then the point of earworm resistance, there are some uh, some varieties or some, some hybrids of corn that are, are bred to be resistant to corn earworm. So that's a big deal to talk about. And then uh, we're very concerned that some of these resistant varieties aren't so resistant now. So uh, I'm sure that uh, we're going to have Dominic Resnick from uh, who's an entomologist with NC State is going to be talking about the, in the corn earworm resistance. And then, of course, with the, 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 the trade uh, and tariffs wars that are going on, they're negatively impacting commodities and corn in particular. And we hope to have somebody there to talk about corn prices and the impact of the tariffs on corn uh, and what that means to the, to the agricultural industry, particularly for people that grow corn for a living. So if you're interested in this, again, we, we are going to serve lunch. So again, we would like to have an idea of how many people are going to show up. So please give us a call at the Person County Extension Center, 336-599-1195. In case we haven't said it enough yet. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I heard one time you got to say something at least seven times before it starts registering with some folks. Well, we're pretty close to that number we're getting already, there. We're we? getting there, yes. Uh, and we'll make mention of this, and we'll keep you reminded of it. The 2018 Tri-County Livestock and Pasture Management Field Day will be Thursday, September 27th, 9 a.m. until 3. And it's going to be here in Roxburgh at Rogers Cattle Company on Woodsdale Road. This will be a free event, and we will keep you updated and reminded about that up until that time. They do ask that you RSVP by September the 13th. So we've talked about it a mm -hmm. lot on the show. Pastor management is something that is really, really valuable Correct. whenever you have livestock. But uh, Paul, by the clock on the wall, we're pretty much out of time. And the time has just really went away from us again today. We appreciate uh, Michelle Van Ness. Jada Hanna and Mr. Paul Westfall for coming out and sharing some information with us here on the Gardener's Corner program. Thanks to our sponsors, T.G. Brooks Company, Owl Pride Foods, and South Boston Memorials. On behalf of Rob Hall, myself, Kilby, and the rest of the station personnel in Radio Roxborough, we'd like to wish you and yours a happy and safe Friday afternoon and a good weekend, and thanks for tuning in.